Hello and welcome to Mystic Visions. This is a monthly tarot reading for Aquarius for the month of May. So welcome Aquarius friends and let's go ahead and get into your reading and see what we have. Okay, so for you we have the Sun in the reverse, Nine of Cups in the reverse, the Tower, the Five of Swords, the Nine of Wands, the Hermit, Seven of Cups, Five of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, and the Nine of Pentacles. Okay. Very cool. So let's move that down just a hair. Yeah. All right. So what we have for you today, uh, your current situation is the sun in the reverse crossed by the Knight of Cups. Um, now, this typically means that there's... Uh, a look, you have a, you're operating on some false knowledge here. There's something that you think you know, but you're wrong or slightly mistaken, or, or you just don't know um, something. You're operating under false uh, assumptions, right? So you may think that somebody is now. Okay, let, let's pull the Knight of Cups into this. The Knight of Cups usually represents. Uh, he brings romance into this whole situation. He brings relationships. Um, uh, human relationships, you know, if it's not explicitly romantic, it could be, you know, something flirtatious or a person who you tend to think of with certain fond feelings, right? So he brings this in, but he's a little bit, um, he's not totally open uh, with, with you here. Now, on the worst end of this, we could be talking about like infidelity or, you know, cheating, that kind of thing. But on the more innocent side of, of things, there is really just an unwillingness to be open or to um, to make himself like fully known to you. He's being a little he's playing his cards close to the chest a little bit or he's just um, not very open. You know, he's a little closed down. And I see that with the nine of wands in your foundation here, that can end up being a problem. But we'll get to that. So what you're moving away from is the tower. So you're leaving behind some sort of institution that has kind of failed you in the past. There is, and, and that could be marriage, or this could be just, um, you know, it could be just structures in general. Institutions can be anything that is designed by culture or society to, to be a certain way. So you could feel as though you're kind of like, you know, given up on relationships in general because it hasn't worked right. This doesn't have to apply to relationships, though. Um, I, I tend to kind of think it, it's going to for a lot of people because of that Knight of Cups. But uh, in a more general way, the tower can also refer to things like school or government or um, churches, you know, any kind of institution, something that's kind of a product of society, but that has kind of failed you or you've been burned by it, right? Um, so you're moving away from that. You're not putting your trust in that so much anymore and you're feeling a little bit more rebellious or even indignant um but really more you know self fulfilled self actuated um a little liberated right so you're like i don't need that anymore uh, i'm good on my own i can do this and that's a good place to be um, but it also creates a complication in a situation where you're maybe trying to build or maintain a relationship of trust with another person uh, because if you're kind of abandoning the very foundations of the relationship, which is trust, right, from the beginning, because you're saying, I don't need that, I don't want to rely on anybody else, then you're kind of undermining the possibility of having, because a relationship with another human is also such an institution that is meant to uh, bring positive benefits into your life. Uh, but like any institution, you know, it's only... There's a balance because the walls that protect you can also become a prison, right? So there's always this balance. And um, usually having successful, healthy institutions around you involves recognizing the limits of those institutions and having a healthy detachment from things instead of having like a, a have to do this at all costs type mentality, right? Um, so, you know, if you're... If you're a, a church-going uh, person who is very adamant about being a moral and good individual in terms of you know what the church thinks, 
that's great until it becomes something that is psychologically damaging to you and creating a sort of uh, mental illness or um, depression or anxiety in you, right? At that point, it's not really productive anymore and it's doing more harm than good, you know? So um, maturity is really about recognizing those things and uh, realizing when it's time to walk away from things, um, you know, even if it's just temporarily, um, there's always a time to walk away if it's not serving you. And what you're moving toward is this five of swords. So there's kind of two possible meanings here. So first of all, the five of swords is about arguments. Um, and specifically, this is an argument with somebody who you do actually care about. It's, it's not like you just want them to die or you want to defeat them or, or anything like that. This is the person that you you do want to maintain some sort of a relationship but you say things that you don't necessarily mean or things that are too harsh um, perhaps some things that you end up regretting um, because you're too fixated on a thought or an idea or something like that or trying to be right right uh, the intellectual sphere kind of overrides your emotional intelligence in this situation and it causes things to become a little imbalanced between you and others um, and that's the that's the, the energy that you're headed toward now I think that the a good reason that you may be headed that way is because you're not very comfortable with anything not being out in the open or ambiguity or somebody not being honest with you and um, it looks as though the reason you're that way is because you've been through some tough things in the past here um, the nine of wands in your foundation which represents kind of like the frame of this whole lesson or what the universe is trying to teach you the nine of wands indicates that you've been through some things um, this is generally a person who's kind of uh, battered up a little bit or has some uh, injuries right and they are not exactly keen to jump into the fray again and put themselves in a position of risk uh, there's a little bit of being um, being shut down or closed off to these types of risky situations about being vulnerable um and it's because you've been hurt right it's because you've been scarred or whatever so this is about understanding how to not allow those those tough difficult lessons that you go through where you do get hurt or you do get injured you don't want those to close you off to new opportunities you want those to be learning experiences that help you navigate your way through those experiences right so everything that you've gone through is meant to teach you something and if what it taught you is that you don't want to go down that road anymore then you might have gotten the wrong idea right so think about how you can use those lessons to navigate the situation and not to avoid the situation and that's what your um what your universe is trying to teach you right now okay so what we have in your crowning thoughts or your conscious mind is the hermit in the reverse this is a little bit of a feeling of loneliness um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you are alone it could uh it, you know there's an old jack's mannequin song that i used to love and the lyric was have you ever felt alone in a crowded room and that can be the the energy behind this card occasionally where it's like even though there may be other people around you you may not feel as though you can relate with anybody or you may feel as though there is a um a lack of people who understand you or who can who you can get along with right but ironically today i was just telling somebody if you don't feel like you have anyone to talk to uh, make yourself someone to talk to <laughs> And there's a little more there than meets the ear um but you know one interpretation of that is you have got to take responsibility uh, or accountability for the way that you approach others or for the way that you present yourself to others so in other words um you know you've got to become somebody who others want to spend time around who who others want to socialize with um, I know there was a point in my life where I just kind of expected that there are, you know, billions of people out there. There just should be some people who love and accept me however I am, right? And it's a wonderful thought. It's, it's an idealistic thought. 
And uh, I guess in, in the best of all possible worlds, that would be true. But unfortunately, it's not always true. So you do have to be a person who invests in others in order for others to, to feel as though you're a worthy investment. And granted, you'll, you'll come across people in your time who don't really seem to have any logical reason for investing in you. Um, and that's wonderful when you find those things. But as a rule, socialization between humans is something that's kind of reciprocal. So it's not about just like I am who I am and I'm going to uh, I'm going to meet a bunch of people who just love me no matter what I do or who I am. You know, if you're a, if you're a, an ass or if you just don't really uh, uh, exude any sort of kindness to people or anything like that. Well, don't be surprised if not a lot of people want to be around you. And granted, yes, maybe a select few do, but you have to look at how you present yourself to others um, in order to figure out, you know, what what's causing this. Or if you feel like you only attract a certain type of person, look at how your demeanor or your way of presenting yourself, or perhaps your um, you're trying to uh, present yourself as a caring, kind individual who's just um, totally loving and not nefarious. That, that could be like a beacon to somebody who is trying to take advantage of you, right? So be careful how, how you're presenting yourself to others because you could be um, kind of sending the wrong signal that maybe, you know, you're um, naive or something like that on the other end. Uh, so that's what this is about. This is about if you're feeling like it's difficult to relate, look at what signals you're sending. Uh, keep look. At, this is very cool. The hermit here. This looks very much like a lighthouse on the edge of this cliff here. Um, so think about that. There's a beacon um, that you exude, which other people pick up on or they detect, and they're going to come to you if you're exuding the right signals or if you're sending the right type of signals. So you have to start thinking about what signals am I sending? What am I attracting to myself? What is it that I'm... Um, basically asking for, you know? And so, and that, that involves a little bit of honesty, uh, about knowing what other types of people are out there too, which is something that's a learning experience. And you, you know, when you're a child or you're first starting out in life, you're going to be bright eyed and bushy tailed, and you're going to be naive about how certain people are, and you're going to want to think the best of people. But through life and through some of these lessons, you start to understand that there are bad people out there or people that you want to avoid. So that's part of wisdom and growing up. But through learning those lessons, you begin to understand what it is that you're trying to attract or who it is that you want to you want to find or see. Um, and, and I, you know, I'm not talking specifically just about like romantic relationships. This can be friendships or the type of people that you want to be around or, you know, thinking about. Um, where you want to raise a family, what what type of environment you would want to do that in. All of that goes uh, along with this. All of that relates to how this hermit is on your mind, right? So your advice for the current situation is this Seven of Cups. Um, Seven of Cups, you know, what it basically boils down to is you've got some options or some people who are trying to kind of catch your ear they're trying to sweet talk you or sell you on a particular idea. Um, but the idea here is that none of them are really great options. And generally when this card comes up, it's asking you to kind of just like chill for a little bit. Don't make any rash decisions. Don't change things up too much, but kind of see where things go. Uh, give the uh, situation an opportunity to develop a little bit. Okay. So, and, and you know, in this card here, you can see, there's like a snake and a bat and all kinds of creepy things here that are not really, none of them are really good for this guy, right? But he feels like he needs to make a choice. And the feeling that he needs to make a choice is kind of what leads him to go down a path which none of these paths are really good for him. So step back and take a look and say, well, do I have to make a choice right now or can I kind of just wait for something else to change or for something to present itself? 
and show itself as a good option rather than me trying to force the situation. Um, your environment is the five of pentacles in the reverse. So someone around you uh, is kind of in, in need of some help, um, but they may be not uh, asking for it, or they may be essentially afraid to ask for help um, or resistant to it. There's a, a lack of warmth here. There's a feeling like things are, are kind of cold or that you wouldn't be receptive or something like that. Um, but just show this person that you are, you know, and especially in relation to the other cards, um, I think there's an op, there's a need for you to open a channel of communication and show that you are willing to allow someone to express themselves honestly, that you are okay with truth and honesty, even if it's not necessarily the most pleasant thing, or if it kind of destroys some type of image that you are trying to maintain you're you're going to be okay with that and you're going to create a uh an open and loving space for that um because there seems to be a a, a need for people to feel welcomed by you in this situation okay so what you have in your um in your fears card is the six of pentacles and it's in the reverse so you don't want to have to ask for help um, and you don't want to always feel as though you're giving people help. You're a fan of feeling a little independent at this point. And again, that could be because of this Nine of Wands and going through some tough times and not wanting to rely on really anybody but yourself. But in any sort of a, uh, a situation, there's always going to be, you're always going to need help. You're, you can't go it alone, right? Um, every significant event, in human history really teaches us that that you cannot do it alone you have to have help um, and it's about knowing who to ask for help because some people will poison you when you're asking them for food right um, so it, it, th that's what this is about it, it's it's not that you can't just you can't avoid asking for help or you can't avoid um, and and when I say help in this situation that could be just honesty um, asking for someone to reassure your mind um, because you're worried about something. You you can't avoid asking for that if it's something that you need, right? You you can't figure it out on your own. Um, you have to interact with others and request what you want. So this is uh, about knowing how to go about that process. And uh, I know it's uncomfortable and it might dispel some sort of romantic notions or um, the sort of ambiguous beauty of it all, but it may be necessary if you're a person who can't find the will to trust, uh, without a certain amount of honesty or openness. Okay. So your long-term outcome or overall message, you have this nine of pentacles in the reverse. Um, this can mean that there's a little bit of you that is hesitant to sort of take a victory lap, <laughs> um, hesitant to enjoy the fruits of your labor, but instead you may be a little bit addicted to the nitty gritty hard work. Um, this could be just something that you've cultivated because you've recognized that that's what it takes to really get somewhere or to accomplish something. But there's a necessity for you to sort of like sit back and relax a little bit and not to feel like anything needs to be done. And that is, particularly when it comes to relationships, that's an important thing to do because um, otherwise you're going to be bringing preconceived notions into the situation. And those preconceived no notions tend to cloud your judgment because they, they bias you in one way or another, right? Whereas if you're completely chill, there's nothing you really need. Um, and you go into the situation, your judgment is going to be a lot more accurate on what's going on. And you're going to recognize a good deal or a bad deal when you, when you see it. So it's important for you to, um, put a little bit of energy into maintaining that, um, or I say maintaining into enjoying yourself and, and, uh, not just being in the work 
mode, but also enjoying the, the fruits of that work. Okay, so that's about it for uh, Aquarius for the month of May. Please let me know again in the comments what you thought, if it resonated, and um, subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for watching, and this has been Dr. Shiny.